Hey, it's Shane with GotRom.com. This video is about the top seven flexibility goals for someone who is in the movement culture. The movement culture is kind of this interesting phenomenon that's arisen in recent years where we've got power lifters and gymnasts and dancers and yogis and martial artists and boxers all kind of sharing different techniques and methods and ways of training and what kind of unites a lot of these people is an interest in and a need for range of motion and so I want to cover kind of like the top seven like this is the peak of the mountain kind of goals for someone who considers himself in the movement culture, a movement generalist, someone who just wants to be loose and flexible and able to do all kinds of cool things with their body. So enjoy the video. The first flexibility goal of the movement culture is the isometric middle splits. I first saw Ido Portal and some of his top students practicing the isometric middle splits, and I thought, that's super cool. And so I started my own training, and slowly but surely over time, I started to get a little lower in the middle splits, calves getting closer to the ground, eventually getting inches, millimeters away from calves touching, and finally the calves did touch. And then I progressed to even getting the groin to touch, which is kind of the final goal of the isometric middle splits. I write about all this in my How to 10X Your Flexibility ebook. The next up is the pancake splits, a big goal for many, but many start out with a bad pancake and they need to progress to a good pancake. To do so, there's different places that you can put your hands. You can put them out in front of you for more leverage, which will help you turn the pelvis over and get your chest to the ground. You can also use loaded stretching, which is a technique that Ido Portal himself uses, as well as other gymnasts and forms of training. You also need to strengthen the quads to pull you deeper into the stretch, so you can do things like these rope climbs with your legs straight and lifted. Make sure the knees don't bend and the legs don't fall. Keep working on this until you can get chest to ground flat, and even when you're having dinner and a little cute girl comes and wants to show you her splits that she learned in gymnastics without any warm-up, boom, you're ready to go. I teach you how to do all this in my 45-day pancake and middle splits program. Next up on the goal list for the movement culture is the loaded front splits. Of course, passive front splits where you're kind of relaxing on the ground is good, but these loaded splits where you have to control your body weight going down into the motion is really ideal. I usually like to start people by putting their front foot on an elevated surface so that the back knee has more room to bend if they need a break or need it to be less challenging. And then they can progress to a lower elevated surface on the front foot, doing repetitions and isometric holds and different combinations. Ultimately, they also can use a yoga block or some slippery surface to slide out into the splits, something I like to include in my strength training. And even if you're out for your run and you haven't been stretching, you can still drop right into your front splits. To learn how to do this, I also have a 45-day program about the front splits. Next up on the goal list, deep squats. Squatting is everything in the movement culture. As I show here on my TikTok for fun, ass to grass squats, or you can do loaded front squats if you're into weightlifting, back squats in your home gym, or if you're into Olympic lifting, if you're doing a snatch, you have to have good hip and ankle mobility to catch a nice deep snatch. Upright torso, open hips or if you're doing the infamous head to ground routine. Next up, we have the back bridge. Again, my back bridge did not start in a good place, but it eventually progressed and got to be pretty respectable. The back bridge is nice because it keeps your posture open, keeps your hip flexors open, keeps the shoulders strong and stable. They say you're only as old as your spine, so if you keep your spine nice and bendy, you're going to live a long life and you can do all kinds of fun things like back handsprings, back walkovers. The ultimate progression should be with the feet flat and the chest past the 
arms. So you can do things like Mexican handstands, back bends, all kinds of fun stuff. 45 day back program at gotrom.com if you need it. Next up, the head to toe stretch. I have a video on YouTube about how to do the head to toe as long as well as the black book of flexibility secrets. Now monks and little monklets, little kung fu masters have been practicing this style of stretching for a long time. But if you're not young and supple like them and you started a little bit old and stiff like me, you still can get your head to toe at the mid level, at the ground level, standing, freestanding. The mid level is probably the first progression for most people, but moving to pistol squats and elevated head to toes is even more advanced. In my 45 day ballistic stretching program, I explain in great detail how to get the head to toe in every position, not just by doing the typical sort of bounce stretching or ballistic stretching that people are used to, but also by uh, taking care of some of the tight tissues in the hamstrings, the knots, the scar tissue. You gotta be careful you don't strain your hamstrings while doing this style of training. I teach you how. Next up is pike and hamstring flexibility. Most people start off barely being able to touch their toes, like me many years ago. And the goal is to get your hands flat for things like Stalder presses and various other movements. But to get those, you need to have perfect pike flexibility, something I talk about on this YouTube channel. And of course, if you've been doing your ballistic stretching and getting even close to getting your head to toe, the pike becomes that much easier. But you can also use things like loaded stretching, Jefferson curls, which allow you to go beyond the floor. Something else that I talk about on this YouTube channel in this video. You also need to learn how to contract your quads, the blue muscles in this picture, to allow your hamstrings to lengthen and release the knots and trigger points in your hamstrings by doing targeted tissue work using balls and other pinpoint devices, not just foam rollers, but pinpoint devices to release some of the knotted tissue. That'll take you from where you are to where you want to be with your pike flexibility. I've got a 30-day hamstring flexibility program for beginners, if that's one of your goals. So these are the top seven goals of the movement culture to recap. One, loaded middle splits, pancake splits, loaded front splits, deep squat, back bridge, head to toe, and pike. See you in the programs. Thank you.